we go. A beautiful Monday. We're about to get started with a great workout. And thanks for joining us. So I hope you guys had a great weekend. We got a great workout set up for you today. Uh, it's actually courtesy of CrossFit HQ, which we're so excited what they're doing for so many of the local boxes. And we appreciate your support and your help with the, this stuff during this time. Um, and if there's anything you need from us, we're, we're here to help. So the, we're in this together. We're stronger together. And the more we can work together, uh, that, that's what we want. And so um, we, we understand that you know, you've got to do what, what you've got to do that what's best for you and your family. And we're here to help support that too, as much as we can. And we also want you to be able to take advantage of all the stuff that we're doing. Um, that's why we instituted more kids classes. We've got kids classes five days a week, teens classes five days a week. So if you need a for quality and really uh, get the intensity where you need it and get the stretching where you need it. And so we're starting off with those high knees. You're going to do 30 of them and it's going to be right plus left equals one rep. So get those knees up as high as possible. Get that heart rate up. Get that intensity going. Stay on the balls of your feet. Use your arms and legs together. If that impact is bothering you to do that, that jumping, that uh, running motion, then you can always do just one after the other and really bring that knee into the chest and that will reduce that impact uh, as you get into it. Then after your 30 high knees, we've got 10 push-ups to a down dog. So get in that push-up position, get all the way down chest to deck, and then as you come up, get that down dog stretch. Right back and do it again. If you need to go off your knees, same thing, right up and down, and then get into that down dog stretch every time. After the 10 push ups to a down dog, you're going to come right back up and get into 10 sumo squats. So, normal squat stance is about shoulder width apart, sumo, sumo squat stance is going to be a little bit wider than that. Still work on keeping that chest up as you get below parallel and get that full range of motion every time to get those hips loosened up. After your 10 sumo squats, we're going to get into 10 three-second hollow holds. So yes, this should take about 30 seconds, and you're just going to make that banana shape with your body. Three, two, one, and then right back down. So keep that motion going. Um, if you need to, if getting into that banana shape just isn't working for you, you can always just bring your legs up, three, two, one, and just keep your legs as straight as possible for each of those reps. After your 10 uh, three-second hollow-ups, you're going to do 10 mule kicks. So on that mule kick, you're just going to hinge at the waist, Go all the way down and kick that opposite leg up and switch legs every time. Again, right plus left equals one on these. You can also do this if getting down to the ground isn't quite working. You can do this off a bench, a box, a chair, and do the same motion. You're just not going quite all the way down, and that will just help with your balance and any equilibrium issues that you've got. And then we'll finish it up with 30 butt kickers. So same thing, get that intensity back up, get that heart rate going. And also same thing with the impact. If that impact is bothering you, then just get that big step one after the other and get to 30 of them. So 30 high knees, 10 push-ups to down dog, 10 sumo squats, 10 three-second hollow holds, 10 mule kicks, and then 30 butt kickers, four rounds, keep a nice easy pace through everything, and like I said before, keep the intensity where it needs to be, and then bring it back down where you can so you can get that good stretch and get what you need to out of each movement. For the strength today, we're going to do some suitcase deadlifts. 
Now, if you've got a barbell and plenty of weight to work on your deadlift, do it the same way, five sets of five, couple minutes rest in between each one. If you're using dumbbells, kettlebells, plates, a sandbag, any of those things, there's so many objects you can use for a suitcase deadlift like this or even a regular deadlift, get creative and use that stuff and then make it fun and make it unique and you'll get different areas of training out of your body by, by using different objects. For example, I've got two dumbbells here and they're different weights. And so if I do that suitcase deadlift, I start with them on the ground, I'm getting my butt lower to the ground, I'm keeping my chest up, and then I'm just standing up and going right down to about that mid shin every time. And I'll do three this way, and then I'll put them down and switch directions, and then I'll do three this way. And that's just because the weight is uneven and I've got a different weight in my right hand versus my left. And so you do want to even that out. Don't do three with the weight heavier on one side and then two with it heavier on the other. Make sure you get that three and three motion. Take a couple minutes rest in between each set and go through those five sets of five. If you need to use a kettlebell, you can do that. Uh, dumbbells, you can use plates on the kettlebell. Even if you've just got one, you can do the same thing. We do that one side and do your three. And then switch, turn around, and do three from the other side. Just really make sure as you get into this, you're keeping your back and core in a good position. We don't want you to get where you're bending over and just picking this weight up. Uh, because that's where you can start to tweak something, and that's no fun for anybody. So really make sure you've got good positioning the entire time. So five sets of five deadlift. Get a couple minutes rest in between each set. And then we've got, for the workout, the support your local box workout number one. So for this workout, you are going to have uh, 10 minutes to complete as many rounds as possible, 10 air squats, 10 right arm snatch, 10 push-ups, 10 left arm snatch, and just keep going around and around until we call time. Now, again, if you've got a dumbbell, great, use it. If you need to use a kettlebell, that's totally okay. I'll show you how to snatch with that. And there are some other options if you're having trouble going overhead. So as we start out, we've got that air squat. So get those feet back in a little bit from that sumo squat right underneath your shoulders, butt down, chest up. As you get nice and low, then stand up all the way in between and keep that motion going. And as you get down, really fight to keep that chest up. Don't just let it hang over. That's where you're going to start to feel it in your lower back later. Then we've got the right arm dumbbell snatch. So butt down, chest up, explode through all the way to the top and right back down. Make sure you touch both heads of the dumbbell to the ground each time and get right back through it. After you do your nine, you're going to go to your push-ups and then you'll do your nine on your left-hand side. If you're using a kettlebell, same thing, butt down, chest up, kettlebells right between your legs, and it helps to bring your thumb back in towards the body. As you're getting that shrug, elbow high pull, and flick, that flick is really going to help you get the kettlebell in a good spot so it doesn't jam into the wrist. It hits the wrist at the same time as you're punching through, so it takes the pressure off. Like so, as I explode, I'm getting right up and punching through, and then right back down. Punch through, and right back down. And that's going to eliminate all that pressure on the wrist, so really make sure you get that punch through at the top. If you've got a kettlebell, but it's way too heavy for doing one arm, you can do two arms with this, where you're 
getting that shrug, elbows, and then flick it overhead, just like this. Keep it nice and close on the way up and on the way down. And I would do nine. If you're doing it with both hands, I would do nine. Do your 10 push-ups and then do another nine. How this is going to go is after you finish your, ten, uh, your, your uh, uh, nine right arm dumbbell snatch, you're going to go down and do your 10 push-ups, either from your toes or from your knees. And then you'll switch to your left arm and do your nine left arm dumbbell snatch. So have fun with this one, guys. Use the leaderboard. And guys, for us, we're just excited that everybody is being supportive of each other with this whole thing. Uh, so whether you're able to participate and do donation, awesome. We love you for it. Even if you're just participating and signing up, it is free for everybody to sign up. So you can enter your score in the leaderboard and get set up with CrossFit HQ. Go ahead and do that and uh, have fun with this one. Uh, send it out to friends. Send it out to family. Have other people do this workout with you. Uh, make it something for the whole family that everybody does together. And uh, if we can do anything to help support, that's what we're here for. So full schedule of classes tomorrow. Uh, make sure you register uh, or reserve your spots so we know who's in which classes. And, uh, yeah, have a great rest of your uh, weekend and get ready for a great week. And uh, we'll, we'll see you this week in a virtual class. Have a great day, guys. Thanks.